if you find 75% decline, and I think that was the big shock to many people all over the world, I think we can talk about an Armageddon. I mean, it's really a dramatic decline. It is, of course, very interesting to know whether there are insects that are, for example, overwinter in the soil, in the water, or in plants. Which of these insects are most affected? It's very interesting to know whether the pollinators are most affected than the others. But mind this, if you find 75% decline, it's such a strong decline that we can be sure that all the groups will be affected. Mm -hmm. If three quarters of, of the whole community disappears, no group can really escape. Uh, we looked at the biomass, the total biomass of flying insects. Uh, the Entomological Society in Krefeld has used these uh, so-called malaise traps, you know, tent-like structures where insects fly in on the sides and then they crawl up and end up in a bottle with alcohol. Then on about every 10 days we empty the bottle and we replace it with a new bottle. And those bottles are being drained from the alcohol and then weighted. And then this procedure has been uh, 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 kept on for at least 27 years across various locations in nature reserves in Germany. And over the years uh, they saw that their samples were getting less and less. The bottles were emptier and emptier. That's how they also started to go back to the places they used to go in the past and uh, remeasure the same areas and also there they saw declines. The worrying thing being that it, it was meant to be collected in a nature reserve because then you have a nice view of how it's supposed to be. You don't collect in a say, farmland or in a city because you know they're probably affected already there. But then we realized that also in the nature reserves over time we are losing uh, most of our insects. Um. So, um, we have found the decline, uh, we know that it, was, it is not necessarily uh, climate change, it's not the management of the, these reserves, so what is it? And what uh, is definitely a strong candidate is the fact that these reserves are very small, very typical of European nature reserves, and they are really captured in an agricultural landscape. Now, we know that that landscape is hostile to insects, you know. It can be very green, but they have nothing to do there. They cannot complete their life cycle, they cannot overwinter. And what's worse, in most cases, it's, it's uh, poisonous for them. We have to talk to farmers, to all the people who are involved, to see whether we can do this in a better way. How we are trying to do it now, small reserves, is apparently not enough. It cannot conserve biodiversity, and that's a shocking result. These results uh, point at the problem that is not necessarily easy to solve, and we can only solve it all together. I think what, what we must consider is to enlarge our nature reserves, have buffer zones from areas that are really hostile for, for insects. Another thing we can do is restore some of the landscape so that insects have points where they can actually uh, go there and, and complete their life cycle uh, with less pesticides and a viable environment. Uh, healthy soil, clear water, plants in which they can overwinter. So these are steps that we can take and some of those initiatives exist of course, but we'll have to do this on a much larger scale.